What's up? How's it going? Welcome to today's watch channel and for this video I'm going to be talking about my Rolex collection and for that wristwatch check AP dual time Really love this watch, but we're talking about Rolex, right? And why Rolex is so great, why they're so coveted You know, it's one of those things, right? Rolexes have become a bit of a, I don't know, cult There's a cult obsession with it uh, love them or hate them, you know, it's a very divisive um, product, especially within the watch, uh, the watch collecting community. They, but they are a great watch, you know, they are, they're made to last, they, they look elegant, and, you know, it's just, it's just something about Rolex, right? When I started getting into watches, you know, uh, I always thought that Ah, you know, Rolex is so cliche, it's so passe, it's such a, it's such an expected uh, choice for anybody into the hobby, right? Uh, but slowly but surely, once you get into the brand, once you pick up your first Rolex, you start to realize, wow, this watch is, is a great watch, it's well made, it's super reliable, robust, serviceable, it's really all... It's really all a person needs, to be quite honest with you. And um, yeah, Rolexes, it just so happened that um, these watches came into my collection and they kind of represent a lot of different uh, genres, right? So the Rolex Explorer, right? If anyone's looking to get into a Rolex, get a Rolex collection, and if you're looking for like a dress, a diver, a GMT and a chronograph, um, maybe this video is for you. It'll give you a couple ideas, and let's see how uh, how we can do it as uh, financial, financially economic, uh, financially economically as possible. I don't want to use the word cheapest, but the least expensive um, alternatives to having a dress, a diver, GNT, and a chronograph. All right, let's uh, start with the dress. Rolex, right? Dress Rolexes, you know, that's the one thing that they're really not good at. They have the Cellini line and I'd stay away from them. Uh, that's really, you know, that's a true dress watch, very dressy for formal occasions. But if you're not into that, the options are a Rolex Explorer. You know, you could, you can definitely pull this off with a suit, right? A Rolex Explorer is an icon. It's a great watch. They only sell them in 39 millimeters right now. If, uh, if, it's, if you find it's a little too big, go for the 36, right? Fantastic watch, right? Suitable for all occasions. Um, obviously, this was made to be a dress watch, but you could definitely wear it to formal occasions too. Now, uh, a less expensive alternative would, you know, you could get a date dress. You know, I think the date dress is definitely a lot more dressy, a lot more formal, and I think. Uh, if you're just going for a Rolex centric collection, I would actually pick a, I would actually pick a date just um, over the Explorer, or even a simple Oyster Perpetual. Actually, that would that would probably be an even less expensive option. But you know, I would actually put in a little bit more, a uh, little bit more money for the date just, and um, and go with that alternative. Go with that option instead, especially if you're. If you have committed to getting multiple Rolexes, you want to dress Rolex, the date just would be the best option. Now, you want a diver. A diver, you got many options when it comes to Rolex, right? The obvious choice is the Rolex uh, Submariner. However, for me, I went with the Yachtmaster. It's got a blue dial. It just gives me that color. That's why, you know, it's one of the reasons why I got this. For those of you who say that the Yacht Master is not a diver, hey, the vintage subs, they were bi-directional. You know, are those not considered divers? Obviously, this watch is very polarizing, right? It's not for everybody, it's not everybody's cup of tea. But, you know, for me, I love the Yacht Master because it's not a Submariner or a GMT, right? It's just a little bit more, for me at least, right? It's just a little bit more unique and um, I just like that color right so what's okay what's the least expensive diver in Rolex 
uh, it still is, look for the five digit Submariners, right? The 1166, sorry, the 16610, the dates up, or the 14060. Those are, they're not cheap by any means, guys. You know, cheap and Rolex, they don't go well together. They're expensive. However, they can be had, you know, if you're looking for a dive Rolex, I, I think the 14060 is, is a beautiful watch. I think, uh, I think that's the way to go if you're looking for a diver. All right, now moving on. If you want a travel Rolex, a GMT function, well, it's a GMT Master II. Uh, what's the least expensive option? Well, it's not a GMT Master II, right? It's obviously the Rolex Explorer II. And that is a beautiful watch. The Explorer II is a fantastic piece. Just love that watch. Um, but for me, it just so happened that, you know, this came into my collection. I traded my vintage sub for this GMT Master II. And it's it's a great watch. Just love the faded insert. Beautiful, beautiful piece. All right. Uh, as a matter of fact, this one has become more, well, people are paying more for these compared to uh, the ceramic GMT, the LN. Uh, the the black ceramic GMTs, people are paying more for these right now. These are still trading less for uh, the, the, the Batman, the BLNR, uh, but who knows, that might change in the future, right? So yes, the traveling Rolex, and well, last but certainly not least, the Rolex like Daytona, unfortunately, there is no there's no lesser, no, there's no, <laughs> there's nothing. This would actually be the least expensive chronograph offered by Rolex, right? Um, I guess you could go uh, Tudor Big Block, Tudor chrono Chronograph, but it's just not the same, right? That for the Daytona, they are expensive, expensive pieces. There's. I guess I have the least expensive Daytona uh, that you can get in the market right now. And they are by no means um, affordable. They're very expensive guys, you know, but unfortunately there's no way around it. And um, it's one, one of those things that you gotta pay to play, you know. I I feel, I got very mixed emotions about it. You know, I would I would definitely love for more people to experience ownership of a Daytona. It really is something special. However, they are very, very dear. And unfortunately, there's no alternative. You know, for, for like the Explorers, you know, for the, the dive watches, for the GMTs, you know, you have options, right? You don't have to go for the most expensive models. But then when it comes to the Daytona, there is no alternative, really. It's just the Daytona. That's the only chronograph that they offer. If you go for if you go for the older uh, Daytonas, wow, you're gonna be paying an arm and a leg for. Um, but yeah, that's this is my my uh, my Rolex collection, and um, uh, I, I don't really know. Uh, you know, I have a little bit of mixed feelings about this. You know, it's a little bit cliche, a bit passe, right? I I, I really don't want to rub people the wrong way, but I do love Rolex and. You know, it's, I guess, what can I say? I love Rolex, right? All right, that's that's all I have to say. Anyway, thanks for watching um, this video about my, um, my Rolex collection. Okay, thanks for watching. I'm out. Bye.